Not that it necessarily takes a big old trade report for you to discover this, but Marvel is in a bit of a crisis. Hey everyone, what is up? It is me, Ewan from What Culture, joined today by... Adam, how's it going everyone? Yeah, I mean, if it's if you're probably doing better than Marvel right now. <laughs> yeah. Given the report that came out yesterday from Variety, which has laid bare a whole bunch of issues that us as people who, you know, obviously invested in cinema and film and, and, and kind of are aware of what's been going on over the, like the, the industry troubles with Marvel over the last year, it's kind of already apparent. This lays bare even more specific aspects of that trouble that has occurred over the last year because obviously, you know, Marvel hasn't been doing so hard. We've had a bunch of different box office disappointments, you know, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania didn't do that great, and the Marvels that is set to release this week uh, is also tracking quite poorly. Um, and obviously you've got all the stuff with the Disney Plus shows which haven't particularly been endearing themselves to critics anytime soon. So yeah, this report from Variety, it kind of goes into behind the scenes issues with uh, Jonathan Majors, who of course plays Kang the Conqueror. Um, concerns from Disney about the saturation of the franchise leading to diminishing returns, and even a harebrained scheme to bring back members of the classic Avengers roster for a new movie. We're gonna go ahead and break it down, but Adam, uh... <laughs> What are your initial thoughts here? Because there are some wild quotes in this report. This is insanity. Marvel right now, it just seems like it's a sinking ship. Like, there's nothing kind of like a redeeming factor in any of this. This whole kind of <laughs> the article basically just outlines everything of the lack of direction that Marvel has right now, you know? Like, they really did peak when they had everything built up right up until Endgame. They had a clear plan, they had clear direction, everything was built up there. We had these standalone kind of movies and brought these heroes together, and it made sense, right? It was organic, it made sense. But now this, it's just, oh man, it's, it's just lost in the weeds. Like, it really is floundering. Then all of these reports that we get coming out, everything that's coming out, all of this that's coming out about Marvel, they are just wandering in the dark, and it's, it's a real shame, but oh boy, some of the things we're going to touch on right now are such an eye-opener. Yeah, definitely. So we're going to start off with the beginning of the report. So um, again, this is from Variety. They, uh, the article opens with by saying that this past September, a group of Marvel creatives, including studio chief Kevin Feige, assembled in Palm Springs, <laughs> like the views of assembled there, for the studio's <laughs> annual retreat. Most years, the vibe would have been confident, given how the premier superhero brand owned by Disney since 2009 has remade the entertainment business. But this occasion was angst-ridden. Everyone at Marvel was reeling from a series of disappointments on screen, a legal scandal involving one of its biggest stars, Jonathan Majors, and questions about the viability of the studio's ambitious strategy to extend the brand beyond movies into streaming. These are all really big issues that, you know, speaking personally, I don't really feel like Marvel has been actively addressing in any way or shape or form. For me, obviously anyone who's been familiar with the channel for the past few years will know that back when Marvel was in its heyday, I was kind of really absorbed and in that moment. And uh, stepping away from it, kind of gave me a lot of good perspective and I realized that this kind of franchise isn't really for me but regardless of that people who are with it you know there is definitely still a profound sense of, of, a, of a dip in quality in regards to the stuff on Disney and also behind the scenes tumult with Jonathan Majors which isn't helping the actor was arrested earlier in March this year uh, and charged with assault and harassment in the wake of that arrest came further allegations of abuse from previous partners, which Variety goes over in their report. Uh, one of which that the report mentions is reported to have occurred during the production of Loki Season 2. Mm. Um, the report also mentions that he was dropped by his publicist and manager early in the year and is due to attend a trial in, Nove uh, in November in New York. Um, and yeah, this whole thing with mages, it seems as if, from what the report is saying, Marvel kind of responded quite late to it and we're playing a wait and see approach with things. Um, the report has this really good quote um, from a quote unquote deal maker. I mean, <laughs> what even is that position? Um, saying that Marvel is quote, truly effed when it comes to the character. They mentioned the dealmaker having seen the finale of Loki season two, which of course, you know, Majors features heavily in. Um, and yes, yeah, so the report mentions the opportunity to potentially recast the role, which to me is the most obvious thing to do, given not only has Marvel recast the characters in mm -hmm. the past, yep. they've gone into this whole multiverse thing for a reason, and we know that different actors can show up as different characters or as the same character. Mm. So it seems kind of bizarre that this has become such an issue for them when really the, the right thing to do would have been to, okay, your publicist and management have cut ties with you, okay, we're cutting ties as well because these allegations are truly becoming widespread. 
But the other option they had on the table, Adam, is a bit wild, isn't it? Yeah, so, I mean, all of this, I mean, what are they going to do, Ewan? You know, like, this has been built up, like, Quantum Mania, right? Like, Kang was a big part of that film, which, <laughs> for all intents and purposes, it wasn't a great movie, but he had a big build-up in that, right? And then Loki as well, and then we've got, like, all of the Kang variants that we've seen as well in, kind of, you know, the MCU. So what are they going to do? Like, you know, are they going to recast him, or are they going to change focus and then replace the big bad as Doctor Doom? Now, don't get me wrong, Doctor Doom is a huge, obviously, big bad within, like, Marvel Comics, but... We've had literally zero introduction to Doctor Doom, except for obviously the older Fox movies, I get that. But now with this new MCU, like... You can call that Doctor Doom. I know, right? <laughs> like, what are they going to do? They're going to have to really, really focus on how they're going to do this, if they are going to switch focus and do it like that, because we've had such a build-up. I mean, we've got Avengers The Kang Dynasty. What's going to happen with that? You know, so I really, really am intrigued to see what they're going to do here. And if they do bring in Doctor Doom as, like, a last kind of saving grace, man, you can't just drop that in. Like, we need to have a build-up to a character like this that we haven't seen in the MCU as of yet. And obviously, are they going to do it within the Fantastic Four? That isn't due out until 2025. What are we going to do here? Yeah, I mean, speaking personally, like, again, I'm not invested in these movies at all anymore, but as a comics person, like, I love Doctor Doom. He's yeah. probably my favourite Marvel villain. Such a great character. Um, but for me, this feels, within the current context we have now of, like, Marvel decline, you know, oversaturation, people kind of getting bored with it, this, along with the other method, which will, well, the other plan that is potentially being talked about behind the scenes, this kind of strikes me as desperation, or we're gonna, you know, our, our current stuff isn't working, we're gonna plug in characters that people are familiar with to just basically, <laughs> you know, try and stem the rot, and that comes down to the whole, you know, we've got Deadpool 3 coming out, I think, next year, reportedly, I mean, we'll the, see. The, the current strikes as well <laughs> kind of delayed that quite massively, um, which again is relying heavily on nostalgia with like you know fox characters and stuff so it all just feels like they're throwing anything at, at the board right now to try and stem things a little bit um but the other thing that kind of goes into here you know aside from from kang's role and how marvel have basically you know layered this character as like the big overarching thanos moment for the current phase that we're in the other issue here in regards to streaming output uh, um, is that there is a concern that the quote-unquote glut of content um, has tired out audiences. Mm. Now again, speaking personally, Adam, I'm one of those people that completely got oversaturated by it, and it is content. It doesn't actually feel like anything that necessarily needs to exist. I think the fact that we had a movie the other year in Doctor Strange the Multiverse of Madness, mm. whose entire plot was predicated around a completely unconnected TV show, was obscene. Um, and yeah, there's a really good quote here from a Wall Street analyst saying that the Marvel machine was pumping out a lot of content. Did it get to the point where there was just too much and they were burning people out on superheroes? It is possible. And they also point to the box office returns of Quantum Mania there and the Marvel's tracking for a disappointing opening too. I mean, where do you sit on this kind of, the, the, the current moment that we're in? You know, we, I think I would agree that there is just simply too much here right now. And the, in the more interesting question I guess I have here is, do you think that this is 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 our superheroes having their their moment out is this the end of the superhero dominant phase of the box office because i saw some really good insight on social media yesterday from people saying well yeah you know star wars only really dominated things for six years in the in the in the 70s and 80s um you know marvel has pretty much overextended any natural shelf life that a franchise has when it has like that massive stronghold mm. but is it an mcu specific thing or is this a superhero fatigue thing in general with the dc stuff this year too i think this version of the mcu really needs to have a big shake up you know like i think one of the big problems and it worked for the initial kind of phases right was tying everything together and like that was something new that was really interesting and you know we, we loved it right like that was fantastic we we're all involved and obviously we saw the return of that like you know Endgame will go down as one of the greatest things ever and all the build-up to that. But now we're trying to tie everything together. So all the TV shows we're trying to link somehow back to the movies and everything like that. Whereas at least in kind of over in the DC uh, world, we've got like standalone things that can happen. You know what? It's a standalone story. We've got the standalone character telling in a story. It doesn't necessarily tie to anything else, but that's fantastic. And I think we kind of need more of that because when we think about things that have happened in some of the TV shows, right? Which, as you said, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, like that suffered because it had to tie so directly to WandaVision. And, you know, and there was reports coming out of like varying people on set hadn't seen all of one division and such like that as well but you know look at something like she hulk right where the way that that show ended where suddenly she was like oh i'm going to talk to the writers and i'm going to mix up and change the ending of this show 
how will that work if you tie that into a movie? Where are the stakes if someone like She-Hulk can just say, oh, I'm going to jump out of the screen and talk to the writers and change things up here? Where are the stakes? And I know that, you know, that's a comic, that, that, that happens in comic books, right? With She-Hulk, obviously Deadpool does similar stuff as well. And I love that, right? It's very meta, it's very fun. Of course it is. And as a standalone thing, that works really well. But to try and tie it all together when things are so varied and so different right now, with the multiverse as well, where anything is possible because we have various multiverses going on. Like, where do we go? It just feels like there's no clarity. We're kind of just throwing everything, as you said, you and at the wall and seeing what sticks. And yeah, where do we lay, where do we lay in terms of sticks and how do we build this all together? And can we actually let things stand alone without the need to tie things together? It so reminds me of, like, the actual comics themselves when the 90s there was a big decline and Marvel was relying on gimmick after gimmick to try and get people back into its comics, which led to the company going bankrupt. Mm. Um, and it's funny that you mentioned She-Hulk there, you know, obviously a big thing that's been that has been pointed out over the last couple of years is the, is the declining, you know, th these movies look ugly. Like, you look at <laughs> Thor Ragnarok. I mean, oh. you could talk about that being, like, you know, a director's issue there because, you know, whatever but also in terms of like visual effects they look appalling and we've you know the, the report goes into how basically top-down production issues are leading to these crunch driven vfx windows apparently she hulk originally the show she wasn't meant to transform until mm. several episodes in until they realized wait the show is called she hulk we kind of need to have some she hulk here <laughs> which lets people crunching to get that done um, we also have stuff in this, this article about the Blade script being in limbo Oof. for four years and of all the things that you that should be impossible to mess up how do you mess up Mahershala Ali as Blade? It's perfect. Um, one, one of the scripts apparently reduced him to the role of like a secondary protagonist, which is just absolutely ridiculous. We've got some stuff in here as well about Marvel coverage in general, so the stuff that we're doing and then, you know, other people are doing, there's a declining interest in that. People aren't as fired up to interrogate every aspect of the MCU. But now we have the biggest thing. Uh, and this is, again, Brighty saying, quote, sources say there have been talks to bring back the original gang for an Avengers movie. This would include reviving Robert Downey Jr.'s Iron Man and Scarlett Johansson's Black Widow, both of whom were killed off in Endgame. Um, the, the report mentions that there shouldn't be a stumbling block because this stuff happens all in the comics all the time. Um, it says that the studio hasn't yet committed to the idea and says that if it were able to bring those actors back, it wouldn't come cheap because obviously Downey Jr.'s salary was a lot. Um, yeah, this is just... They're cooked, Adam. They're absolutely cooked. This is the most ridiculous kind of scheme that I've seen to try and get people to come back in. We still have the old guys. We have Iron Man. <laughs> he'll, he'll come back. It's just it goes into that whole thing where you know the one thing that I think was refreshing for the MCU as someone who is like familiar with comic books and stuff was that there was a clear narrative arc. You know, you had people age, grow up, mature, develop as characters, and then eventually maybe even die. Yeah. You go, you go to this, you're going back into old comic book issues of, you know, sliding timelines, nothing ever changes. They're just IP action figures for companies to pick up and play with and relate to as a brand. Um, yeah, this, this, is, this is ridiculous, right? This is insane. This is like, there's three points to this for me, so I'm going to go off. So basically, <laughs> like, you know, Hollywood has this big thing right now of nostalgia, right? Like, let's bring this established franchise. Let's bring back things that you loved from before because you love this stuff. Let's throw it in your face. We've seen that so many times as, you know, all, you can think all all of the different films in which this has happened with, right? It's such a big trend right now, but also it is like that saving point of all. If we mess up, let's go back to what they loved and try and recreate that magic. And I don't get it. I mean, I know that, you know, there is an argument to say, look, comic books have done it all the time, right? I mean, look at Krakor and X-Men, like obviously that's a big thread, but because in the right context, that makes sense. We have not seen this yet in the MCU. So it's gonna ask for a lot. To a lot of belief in us to really bring this back because we know the context of what's going on inside of Hollywood behind the production of these movies to then bring in this storyline of oh well this has happened in the comics so wink wink nudge nudge we're going to bring these people back come on and I think in a way it will devalue the sacrifices that the likes of Tony Stark and Natasha Romanoff made in obviously in Endgame right like those were big big moments because we were told look these characters they are dying they are making the ultimate sacrifice and they ain't coming back then to bring them back, I think might cheapen and devalue that whole thing. So yeah, it really, really, if they do go down this route, which sounds insane to talk about with you and I right now, it really depends on how they handle it and how they do it because they have a lot of faith that they need to ask from us in order to make this work. And especially, it's funny to me as well because we've had actors who were involved in that first wave of MCU movies basically talking about how tedious they found it towards the end and how they were looking forward to doing, you know, more artful pieces of cinema. You know, obviously RDJ just had Oppenheimer. Yeah. And I believe he was he was going into the content and, you know, movie art 
debate earlier in the year talking about which of his things feel like content. Um, so I don't even know, even if they approach Robert Downey Jr. with a big sack of money, if he even wants to come back. Because again, not only does it would it diminish his his legacy within this franchise, which is already diminishing its own legacy based on the sheer amount of volume of stuff coming out, but you know, it would. Uh, yeah, I, I don't I don't see this happening. And the fact they're even discussing it um, to me is maybe. And again, I, I I say this as someone who's just not into these movies anymore. It's maybe a hopeful sign that we are over the superhero moment and that maybe we'll get back to having. A more heterogeneous box office. We've already seen it with Barbie. We've already seen it with Oppenheimer. Mm. Um, Kills of the Flower Moon. Hopefully, will continue. Will, will hopefully improve as, as it goes into its theatrical run. Um, yeah, I don't know. Lots of interesting takeaways here. We'll leave the link to the Variety report in the description so you can all go check it out for yourself. Again, it's just uh, I think everyone there is a general admission right now that that Marvel in its current moment is not working. Yeah, um, and. Yeah, we want to know your thoughts as well down in the comments below. What do you think of all this Marvel stuff? Are you still heavily invested in the MCU? Is everything that we've just said completely wrong? Let us know. Or are you also completely tired of everything? And does this kind of confirm your suspicions that there is no plan and the plan that's there that is being formulated, sorry, um, isn't particularly compelling either? Please let us know. Be sure to drop me a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe to War Culture with more news, lists, commentary, stuff like this coming to your inbox every week. Either way, I've been doing. This has been Adam. Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye.